Hi, this is Dynamis 333. My brothers and sisters, we are fast approaching the last great day of the Feast of Tabernacles, the day of the Sacred Assembly. Now, I'm expecting the rapture to take place on the uh, day 22, which is October 11. Um, many are watching for the rapture to take place on the 8th of October, uh, and others are watching for the rapture to take place on the uh, 7th, as you can see here, the 7th of October. So I'm watching along with everybody else. If it happens sooner, the better. So I'll be watching for Saturday, uh, Sunday, and I'll, I'll be watching all up until the 11th of October. Now, my brothers and sisters, uh, the reason why I'm, I'm making this video today is to... Um, give the reasons why many will be left behind. However, um, it may not be as bad as it looks because, um, you know, let me, let me, let me try and explain uh, uh, very carefully what I mean. Now, there's a, this verse here. This is Revelation 13.10. Uh, it reads... He who leads into captivity shall go into captivity. He who kills with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. Now, what does this mean? What this basically means is that anybody that puts anyone in spiritual bondage, whereby they are unable to live a life, uh, that glorifies God. You know what? They are unable to um, receive the righteousness of God, so that then basically they receive false doctrine that stops them from going in the rapture. That's what it means to uh, lead into captivity. In other words, you put them in spiritual bondage, where you teach false doctrine that causes people to be left behind. That person that teaches this false doctrine will also be left behind. Anyone that teaches doctrine that destroys the soul. This, this word sword here is any doctrine that destroys the soul of anyone. That person's soul will also be uh, destroyed. And this is why it says here, here is the patience and the faith of the saints. In other words, we are, we are to persevere in practicing righteousness according to the truths of our faith until the Lord comes. So um, this is what you have to fight to acquire the true doctrine. So uh, what, I, what I intend to say, I've already written it out. Uh, I might uh, elaborate a few things as I, as I go along. So this is what I wrote. False doctrine imprisons the mind and will cause millions of people to be left behind. Those who teach it and those who are imprisoned by it will not make the rapture cut. To lead others into heresy and into the practice of wickedness has serious consequences. Such a person will be left behind for doing so. To kill with the sword means to use false doctrine to destroy the soul of another. Such a person, by doing so, is destroying their own soul. Now, such a person will be left behind to be destroyed along with the wicked. In order to prevent anyone from stealing our crown, we must persevere in practicing the righteousness of God according to the truths of our faith. This is what here is the patience and the faith of the saints means. So what are the false doctrines that, cause, that can cause um, a mind to be imprisoned? Let me read that again. So what are the false doctrines that cause mind imprisonment? Believing that good works are not part of salvation. This produces faith-only Christians. This is dead faith Christianity. Is it because a lot of people believe that, oh, good works are not part of salvation. But that's not what the word teaches. Here's uh, Romans 2, 5-9. Uh, God, who will render to each one according to his deeds eternal life to those who by patient continuance in doing good seek for glory, honor, 
and immortality. You notice that. It says, doing good, you're seeking for something. Immortality. Mm? Paul is letting you know that you have to do good to experience immortality. But to those who are self-seeking and do not obey the truth, but obey unrighteousness, what do they get? Indignation and wrath, tribulation and anguish on every soul of man who does evil. You see, there are a lot of people who call themselves Christians, they do evil because they don't think they need to do good. So what happens? If, you, if you're not encouraged to do good, what happens? You do evil. And then you claim that you're under grace. Mm? Anyone teaching this type of doctrine? You are leading people into captivity. You are destroying souls. There's a price to pay for that. You will be left behind. Mm? Teaching that Christians, the second one, teaching that Christians don't need to keep the Ten Commandments, this produces Christians that practice lawlessness. This is what the law said. Now everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven, to do the will of the Father is to keep the Ten Commandments. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, and done many wonders in your name? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you, depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. When people are told not to keep, they don't have to keep the commandments, people, that, that automatically means people are being encouraged to practice lawlessness. If you're teaching this type of doctrine, this type of heresy, you're causing people to be left behind, you will also be left behind for teaching this. The third one, teaching that Christians are free to divorce and remarry. This produces Christians who practice adultery. So if you're telling people, oh, don't worry, you know, if you, you, you go, you can't, you see, you're free to remarry. God wants you to be happy. Uh, God understands. We're under grace. We don't have to keep the, you know, this is not a salvation issue. If, you, that's, if you're teaching that to people and they are divorcing and remarrying because of what you taught, they're left behind. You have led them into captivity. You will also be left behind. Whoever divorces his wife and marries another commits adultery against her. And if a woman divorces her husband and marries another, she commits adultery. This is rampant in the church. I've, I've talked about it in many, many, uh, many of my videos. But I keep on uh, stressing it because many are going to be left behind because of this. They were taught this in church. Those who taught them they will, will be judged because of it. They'll be left behind. And those who follow what they teach will also be left behind. And here's the... Last one here, teaching that the Father is a separate entity to Jesus. This produces Christians who reject the divinity of Jesus Christ. There's only one God of heaven and earth. That one God is the Lord Jesus Christ. He is the everlasting Father manifest in the flesh. The Lord and the Father are one like body and soul. The Lord and the Father, the union of the Lord and the Father is what produced the Holy Spirit. So you can see there's one God. The Holy Spirit uh, is produced, flows out from the Lord Jesus Christ because of his union with the Father. That's why he had to unite his body with the, with the Father by, by rising from the grave. And that's why we have the Holy Spirit. So we worship one God, one divine being. And that one God is the Lord Jesus Christ. If you're teaching people, you know, they can, you know, they can speak to Jesus, they can speak to the Father and, and he can go back and forth. No, there's only one God. The Lord Jesus Christ, he is the manifestation of the invisible God. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are one in the Lord Jesus Christ. This is why, if you read here in John 14, 7-10, if, if you had known me, you would have known my Father also. This is what the Lord said. And from now on, you know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father and it is sufficient for us. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you so long, and yet you have not known me, Philip? He who has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, Show us the Father? Why didn't the Lord uh, tell um, Why didn't the Lord tell Philip, Oh, my Father is in heaven? Why didn't he say that? He didn't say that. Why? Because the Father and the Son are one, like body and soul. You see, 
one divine being. You see Jesus, you're seeing the Father. You worship Jesus, you're worshiping the Father. Our minds must be focused on Jesus in order to receive anything from the Lord. If you have a divided mind, you have thinking about the Lord, you're thinking about the Father, you think about the Holy Spirit, and you're going back and forth between two, three, you're not worshiping one God. Anybody that teaches that, they're teaching you to be left behind. You will be left behind because you, you have to worship one God. Hmm? The, the, the reason why there's so much heresy is because people have a divided idea about the Lord, and that's why many people are being led into uh, are being led astray. Hmm? Now, this is what I wrote here. Hundreds of millions of Christians will be left behind because they subscribe to these false teachings. It's going to take being left behind for the blinders to come off and for these false doctrines to be rejected. Then Christians will start to keep the Ten Commandments. You see, people think that um, now we're under grace, that, they, that we don't keep the Ten Commandments now. That's not true. You know what that teaches you that? It's teaching you heresy. You see, then they'll start to uh, people start to live according to the commandments. That's why you're reading here in Revelation 12, 17. And the dragon was enraged with the woman, and he went to make war with the rest of her offspring, who keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. In Revelation 14, 12, here is the patience of the saints. Here are those who keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. They were not doing this before. Now they are doing it now. Mm, I want people to do it now so that they don't have to be left behind to do it, uh, you know, after in the Great Tribulation. Now, receiving and living according to the doctrine of Christ is how the Lord sets our minds free to receive the love of God. Without the love of God, we cannot practice the righteousness of God. This is very important. Without the love of God, we cannot practice the righteousness of God. Look, this is what 1 John 3.10 says. Whoever does not practice righteousness is not of God. Hmm? Why is this so important? Without the righteousness of God... In us, we won't be able to obtain faith for the rapture. Now, this is where people are going to come unstuck. You need the righteousness of God to have faith for the rapture. Mm, why is this important? No, you, you, soon, uh, you soon found out. Now, this is 2 Peter 1 and 2. Look what it says here. To those who obtain like precious faith with us by the righteousness of of our God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Do you notice this? Jesus Christ is called God. It's called God and Savior. The righteousness must come from Him. If you don't worship Jesus as God, you can't receive the righteousness. You can't receive the love. You cannot have the faith to believe in Him for, to be included in the rapture. You see, my brothers and sisters. So, Look at what it says here. To those who obtain like precious faith with us by the righteousness of our God and Savior, Jesus Christ. We need to practice righteousness to have faith for the rapture. Now, this will become more clear as we, as we read on. This is Leviticus 23, 36. For seven days you shall offer an offering made by fire. Now, the fire here is the love of God. This is the righteousness of God because you, you, the love of God is what, that's the, the spiritual fire and it's the love of God that produces the righteousness of God. And when you have uh, um, the righteousness of God, you can have, you can offer up true faith. You can offer up praise that has the righteousness of God in it. That's why it says, for seven days, you shall offer an offering made by fire. That uh, offering is truth of faith, which is praise, worship, reading the Bible uh, by the Spirit of God, made by fire, that's the righteousness of God, to the Lord. On the eighth day, you shall have a holy convocation and you shall offer an offering made by fire to the Lord. It's a sacred assembly and you shall do no customary work on it. So you see, we have to have the righteousness of God. We have to have the truths of faith in us. These are all received from the Lord. These heresies, these uh, false doctrines will prevent you from receiving this, my brothers and sisters. Let's read further on. This is Deuteronomy 16, 13 to 15. You shall observe the Feast of Tabernacles seven days when you have gathered from your threshing floor and from your wine press, and you shall rejoice in your feast. Seven days you shall keep a sacred, uh, sacred feast to the Lord your God in the place which the Lord chooses 
because the Lord your God will bless you in all your produce and in the work of your hands so that you surely rejoice. You see, in other words, for you to uh, rejoice, for you to praise the Lord, to worship the Lord on the day of the rapture, you have to have produce. You have to have the righteousness of God in you. Mm, we have to have this righteousness in us. And we can only do, do that by shunning evils, keeping the Lord's commandments, doing good. That's all the righteousness of God. Mm? No, brothers and sisters. This is uh, Nehemiah 8, 14, to 8 uh, 14 and 18. And they found written in the law, which the Lord had uh, command, commanded by Moses, that the children of Israel should dwell in booths during the feast of the seventh month. Also, day by day, from the first day, that's uh, from the 4th of October, until the last day, that's the uh, 11th of October, he read from the book of the law of God, and they kept the feast seven days, 4th to the 10th, and on the 8th day, 11th of October, was the sacred assembly. This is when I expect the Lord to gather us up uh, into heaven on the 11th of October. It could happen sooner, but I'm looking at the 11th. Now, look at this. But you, brethren, are not in darkness, so that that day, this day should overtake you as a thief. You are sons of light and sons of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith. Is that where? Truth of faith. And love. That's from practicing the righteousness of God. How do you put on love? You've got to practice righteousness. How do you put on faith? You've got to speak the truth of faith. These all, they exist together. And as a helmet, the hope of salvation, that is the hope of receiving a glorified body. You can see right here, you can see that the uh, Paul is alluding to the Feast of Tabernacles. Hmm? Faith and love. Faith, that's the offering, and, and it originates from the righteousness of God, which we, we get by practicing, um, we, which we, we, we receive from, by having the love of God flowing into us. My brothers and sisters, here we have, we see again, 2 Thessalonians 1, 7 to 10. The Lord just is revealed from heaven with his mighty angels. He comes in that day to be glorified in his saints. So he's coming to be glorified. In other words, as the Lord comes closer to us, we are, his spirit in us is going to react. Hmm? His spirit, the spirit of God in us is going to react. It's going to move us to glorify him, to celebrate him, to praise him, to rejoice when we see him. Hmm? And to be admired among all those who believe. Now look at this verse here. This is 1 John 4, 17, 18. Love has been perfected among us in this, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment. Why do we need boldness in the day of judgment? It's because when the rapture is about to take place, falling angels are going to come crashing down. There's going to be a lot of things that are going to appear in the skies that are going to cause people to be afraid. So we need to have in us the love of God. How do we get the love of God in us? How does, how does the love of God get perfected in us? You've got to practice the righteousness of God. That's why it says, love has been perfected among us in this, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in the world. There is no fear in love. Perfect love casts out fear. Why, why would people be afraid on that day? Because fear involves torment. But he who fears has been made he who fears has not been made perfect in love. In other words, if you're afraid on the day of the rapture when all these things are happening, it's because you've not been practicing the righteousness of God. How do you perfect love? You've got to practice righteousness so that when when the the, the skies roll back and the and the demons start uh, to be cast down onto the earth, you're not going to be afraid. You're going to lift up your hands. You're going to boldly start praising the Lord. The love of God is perfected in us when we practice the righteousness of God. This is how we obtain faith to praise the Lord on the day of judgment, which is the day of the rapture. My brothers and sisters, fallen angels who will be cast down onto the earth on the day of the rapture. Mm, let me read that again. Fallen angels uh, who will be cast down onto the earth on the day of the rapture. Millions of people will become paralyzed with fear many will have heart attacks and won't be able to call on the lord jesus christ these fallen angels will torment people you see they will smell fear wherever fear is they'll be there 
because they know that these people don't have any. They've not perfected love. They've not practiced righteousness. They've not filled themselves with the love of God. They've not kept the commandments.、Hmm? They've been they've been they've been, they've been believing in false doctrine. So they're going to be tormenting people, my brothers and sisters. But those who have who are filled with the love of God, who are been practicing the righteousness of God, these are the people that have faith to glorify Jesus. As believers who are filled with the righteousness of God and faith. We'll be able to boldly stand our ground, lift up our hands, and start praising the Lord. As we do this, in the hope of receiving our glorified bodies, we should expect to be gathered up for this sacred assembly on the last great day of the Feast of Tabernacles on the 11th of October, 2023. So, my brothers and sisters, this is、um, what I just wanted to share today. You know, don't let anyone steal your crown. There's a lot of false doctrine. That's going to cause people、uh, to be left behind,、uh, but but there's a there's there there is hope because、um, there's a possibility that they might、uh, on that day because don't forget it's called a great day for a reason. It's possible that even if the rapture takes place,、um, it may not just be one rapture. There could be waves of rapture on the same day, though. On the same day,、um, I wrote this.、Uh, no, I didn't write it, but、um, I posted this a long time ago. Um, this was something that、um, a lady was shown. She was shown that the rapture happens in waves; that it wasn't just one rapture. So, if you miss one, you can still go in the, in the second or third one. So, let let me just、uh, read it here quickly.、Um, she says,、uh, "If if this is Daniel Erickson, if you are preparing yourself for the rapture, but all your family have、uh, seems to be not be prepared at all, you should you not try to stay behind in order to help the family." Uh, she was talking about people that are of the members of the family that maybe they're not ready. That would you you stay behind to help them out?、Um, I'll probably post the link of this in 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 this in this video. But the part I want to show is this part here.、Um, this is what she wrote here. The Lord has also shown me that there are many fence sitters who will believe when they see it, who will suddenly be awakened to the day and hour in which they live. And promptly repent and praise His name. Look what they said there: repent and praise His name. There will be great joy in heaven over these late comers as they are brought into the kingdom. Perhaps I need to explain that the Lord has also shown me that the rapture occurs in several waves. It is these delays between waves that give opportunity for last moment repentance. So this is what I hope happens.、Hmm? Uh, this lady asked. Mr. Perkins, when you say that the Lord revealed to you that the rapture comes in waves, please, if possible, could you explain that further? Thank you. So this is what she said.、Um, first, I will say that it always it's always possible that I misinterpreted what I was seeing. Having said that, what I believed I was seeing was people being pulled from the planet. Then a pause, although the vision happened very quickly. In my mind, it seemed that a few hours may have passed. Then another wave came over the earth, and more were taken up. This kept happening throughout the day. So, my brothers and sisters, there's a possibility that there's going to be more than one rapture on the same day. So, people can still have opportunity to repent. This, this is this is what I pray happens. It seemed that the pause allowed for those that understood what was happening to witness to those who that that did, that did not, and that people were coming to Jesus throughout the day. This reminds me of the parable of the workers that were called up to help with the harvest right up until the eleventh hour, so that the maximum possible harvest was achieved. I felt I, I I received a confirmation in what I saw when I heard another person tell of her dream, where she and some others witnessed two people being taken up. Everyone ran to the place these two people had been been standing. The others began to cry out, "Why didn't the Lord take us too?" The woman, having the dream, said she heard the Lord say, "It is already done." She then said to everyone, "Let us go to church." Then they prayed and sang, and soon they also were taken up. You see what they did? They prayed, they sang. That singing, that is faith. Reading your Bible,、uh, singing the Psalms, speaking the Psalms, praying in tongues—you know all these things. That's faith. But it must come from fire. It must come from the fire of the love of God, and that love of God is perfected when we practice. Righteousness when we shun evils and we're doing good by the Spirit of God. So any doctrine that that causes you not to practice righteousness, 
cause you not to uh, have faith. Anything that anything like that is is heresy, and it will cause you to be left behind. So, my brothers and sisters, this is just to encourage you because I want as many people to go into rapture as possible. So, and I'm preferably go in the first wave. <laughs> if there's more than one wave, you want to go in the first wave. So, when these fallen angels start to uh, come crash, crashing down. Uh, maybe the, the 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 sky rolls back. Whatever you see happening, don't be afraid. Lift up your hands. Start to praise Jesus. Start to love Jesus. Now repent. If any of those things, if you are guilty of any of those things that I, I listed, repent. You can repent from adultery. You can repent from not approaching the Lord directly. You can repent from any sin and ask God to forgive you. You will. Mm, the Lord loves you. He will forgive you and repent. Say, Lord, Lord, anything that is not of you, Please take it away. You know, cleanse me and start living right. Start living for God. Start loving people around you. Forgiveness. Don't have hatred. Don't have bitterness. Mm? <laughs> My brothers and sisters. So this is just a, a, a quick word um, that um, so that we can all be ready. So I'm looking. If it happens on the seventh, which is to, uh, on the seventh uh, today, is it today already uh, Saturday. If it happens today, great. If it happens on the eighth, great. I'm looking at the eleventh. Uh, my brothers and sisters, I believe this is it. I pray that we, we see each other uh, in, 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 the, in the heavenly kingdom, in the new Jerusalem. And I hope to speak to you soon. Have a great day. Bye for now.